All right. I had a comment today that I shouldn't, even though it was from the first video of the series, that I should not uh, make videos when the kids are making noise. So I figure I want to get a little bit ahead at least. Um, I like to be ahead with the Dafyomi Shirim. This way people who want to watch them on the day, they don't have to wait for it to upload. So I'm going to do the first Amud of Chaf Beis and of Zara now, 22A. I don't have 22B with me anyway, so that I'll have to do later. So we had yesterday, which we actually learned today, the price is that Tanya Rabbi Shimon Lazar Emily asked, there's a bright that says Rabbi Shimon Lazar says you cannot rent a field to a Samaritan because you're going to know because people know that it belongs to that Jew. And the Samaritan is going to do labors that are forbidden on the intermediate days of the festivals of Passover and, and Tabernacles on Cholamayid. Avlakumai Share the Amri Risa Risisi Avid. However, we said that you are allowed to rent to a pagan. So why would it be that a, a Samaritan who did some, they, they follow certain aspects of Jewish law, we should be more strict than with a pagan. The pagan is going to work on the holiday. So the answer is that he's just a sharecropper. People are going to know he's a sharecropper, and, the, and therefore... He's not. Uh, it's not going to be any question that it, that he's doing the work for the Jew. But if that's the case, why don't we say the same thing about the Samaritan that he's also a sharecropper? So now we're on our daf. Rabbi Shimon Lazar, who is the author of this b'risa that we're quoting, a b'risa is essentially an apocryphal teaching of the Mishnahic rabbis, the rabbis of the, the era of the Mishnah, something that wasn't uh, wasn't canonized into the Mishnah teaching. So it doesn't hold that much authority, a b'risa. It's just, it's sometimes brought up in discussion, but it, it, it has some authority, but not full authority. So Rabbi Shimon Malazar doesn't hold that we people assume that they're sharecropping. So why? So then the Gemara asks the question, So then why do we let the heathen rent a field? Maybe he's also going to work on Shabbos. And the answer is, we'll tell the heathen you're not allowed to work. If you're going to rent my field, you can't work on Shabbos. And he's going to listen. And so then there's no problem. So then the Gemara asks a new question. Kusi na memories of Leibet Sayas. Now, Samaritans keep Shabbos, but Cholomoid, they're not as strict. So if you why can't we just tell the Samaritan, I'm going to rent you my field, but you can't work Cholomoid. You don't have to tell them don't work on Shabbos. They don't work on Shabbos. That's against their religion. Uh, but Cholomoy, uh, they're not so strict, so maybe that should be the way. So Kusi Leit Sai is to Amrana Gamir Natfemi Nach. The answer is, I mean, we see this sometimes with Jews who are not so religious. The Samaritan is going to is not going to listen. Meaning, if you tell the Samaritan, "Don't work on my field on Cholomoy," he's going to say, "Who are you to tell me? I know better. I know the Bible. We have the same Bible, even though the Samaritans changed the Bible." I know halacha. I'm Jewish. He thinks he's Jewish. Who, who are you to tell me? I know I'm allowed to work on Cholomoy. Don't give me this this firm nonsense. We see this by Jews too. You know, meaning, you know, like the stories. You know, people who they work for, the the work to, for a Gentile, and they say, "What are you doing here? It's Hanukkah. You know, you can't work here." They said, "No, Hanukkah. We're allowed to work." And then he's working for a Jew, and they said, "What do you mean a second day Rosh Hashanah?" One day is enough. In my temple, we keep one day of Shoshana. There's such a thing. So it's it's nothing new under the sun. The Samaritans with the same thing. So this is a whole very interesting issue. So 
So the answer is, it's not the whole issue of it's going to be called. Why? Why are we saying that it's it's what people are going to say? This is the Jews' field, and look, the Samaritan is doing work. What about the Samaritans accepted upon themselves to convert to Judaism? They are bound to keep halacha. They just don't. They, it just happens that they don't. Certain things they do, and certain things they don't. The things they do keep, the rabbis say they keep stricter than a lot of regular Jews. But certain things they don't keep. And this could be putting a stumbling block before the blind person, like we say in, in Leviticus 19.14. And because uh, you're causing the Samaritan to sin, because you know he's going to to be working on Philomoyed, which he's not allowed to do, because he his, his ancestors converted, and they, and that should be it. So, so Bryce could say, there's two reasons. One is Lefnei'ver, you don't put a stumbling block before the blind man, and the other one is because people are going to say this is the Jews' field, and so therefore, and and both reasons are true, and the Bryce just doesn't mention Lefnei'ver, doesn't mention the stumbling block before the blind, uh, because rices, as we said, are not they they they're not totally authoritative. They're outside teachings. That's what it means. Brisa. Han hum ori koi. The a the a kum nakid b'shabsa b'israel b'chad b'shabsa. The story that there were two sharecroppers who were cultivating saffron. A Jew and a non-Jew. The non-Jew <coughs> worked on Shabbos, and the Jew worked on Sunday. Also, come the kami the Rava Sharalahu, and they asked Rava. They went to Rava and they asked, "Are we allowed to do this?" And he said, "Yeah, you're allowed to do it. It's fine." Esu Ravina Rava Yisrael va'Akam shekivu usada b'shutafu zlayima Yisrael va'Akam tol chelcha b'Shabbos v'ni b'chol v'mhisn mitchila mutar v'mbol lechesh ben Aser. So Ravina was like, Rava, wait a second, what kind of psak is this? How are you ruling like this? If a Jew and a and a non Jew accept to be to work together as partners in a field sharecropping, the Jew can't say to the non Jew, You're gonna work on Shabbos and I'm gonna work on the weekday. You're gonna work on the Sabbath and I'll work on the weekday. Um, because they both have an equal obligation every day. Each day is each one is, is supposed to work a half day. But if they're going to say, you know, I'll take a full day, you know, meaning the Jew, but then the Jew says, I'm going to take the full day Sunday, and you'll take a full day Saturday. And then other days will work half and half. So, however, but if that was the original plan when they started the, the Shutfus, when they started their partnership, then they're allowed to do that to divide up like that. However, if the Jew then goes and says, oh, I'm missing out from working on Shabbos and tries to make some calculations, that he's not allowed to do to try to benefit from the work of Shabbos. He kasif. So Rav was very embarrassed because he, it seemed like he uh, he gave the wrong psak, the wrong ruling. So if he got a milsa de his karahavu, in the end they found out that this these two partners in, in the sharecropping business had made the stipulation right from the beginning. And so therefore, it was okay. And so there was nothing for him to be embarrassed about. He, he, they did it properly. It just he should have asked that part in the head, in the, in the, right from the beginning. So Rav Gaviha, Gaviha, there are certain Tinoim Amaroim that we never hear of, you know, very rarely. And here's one, Rav Gaviha of Beikosel, of the house of Kosel. He said like this, the same story, but a little different. Han hu shisil de orla hava. Akam achel shnei de orla, v'yisrael shnei de hetera. There's a law of orla, which means, it means uncircumcised. I remember Moshe Weinberger, as he was in high school, he said, you know, he was learning with somebody, and in the, in the, he said, what is this about someone, one of the Bochim and Ezra came, and he asked him, what's this uncircumcised trees? Is there something about trees I don't know? He said, no, no, no. 
So the same term, orla, it means that the first three years, when you plant a tree, the fruit is not kosher. So, um, so what if a Jew and a non-Jew had, they went into partnership with the trees, and the Jew said the non-Jew can eat the first three years, and the Jew... The, the fourth, fifth, and sixth year, and then from then on, maybe they go half and half or something like that. So they, uh, the permitted years, after from the fourth year on, it's kosher. Also, come the Rav of Shavu So they went to Rav and they asked, is he getting benefit now from the Orly? Because now he has three years uh, that it's his for the f- fourth, fifth, and sixth year. <coughs> and subsequent years, they go half and half. So there's a Jew benefiting from those first three years because of that. Shara Lahu. So Rav said it's okay. So Vaha is favor of Rav. So the Gemara says, but why did Ravina challenge the whole issue of working on Shabbos? There's nothing about Shabbos here. So Suicide is only bringing this to to bring support, not to challenge it. Vaha Kasif. But then the Gemara, it says here that Rava got embarrassed. The Gemara says, no, it never happened. Rava never got embarrassed. The whole story is not true. All right. We'll take it at face value what it says. So they asked, um, what if there was no contract right at the beginning? Are they allowed to make such a such a plan? Without it, without a contract. So Toshma, so listen to this brayse. In his name, it chil muter, hastama aser. The brayse we said that they said they had to make the stipulation right from the beginning. So if they, if it was not specified, it would seem that it's prohibited. A masefa in bolu cheshman aser. But then the brayse goes on. No, if they went and made a calculation, trying to win back what was lost on Shabbos for the weekday, that's what's forbidden. So then if it's not specified and there's no cheshben like that, it should be permitted. So in the end we say, So the real truth is we can't really figure out an answer to this from this. And sometimes we're left off. It seems like it's as fake as the Rabban and Lakula that we can be lenient. So Hadron Allah Lifnei Dehen, we are, have a big schus that we finished the first chapter of Masechus of Vodazar, so we have four more chapters to go, the first parak. Uh, so we'll do the Mishnah that's on the bottom of this Amud, and then we'll we'll go inside. And Mamid and Behema from the Koy Shalakum, Meshach Shudan al Raviyah, you're not allowed, the Mishnah says that you're not allowed to leave your animal in a stall, in a, in a stable by a, a heathen, by a pagan. Again, we're not talking about Christians, Muslims who don't do these things. We're talking about pagans who, they had no issue with that according to their religion. They had no religious qualms. Why are you not allowed to leave them? Because these the Roman pagans, they would commit bestiality, some of them. You don't leave a Jewish woman alone with pagans because they could uh, seduce her or rape her or something. Again, we're not talking about average, you know, good upstanding people today. We're talking in ancient times. When the Romans, that's that's how they lived, you know. That was their whole thing. Um, and a, a male also shouldn't be let, stay alone with pagans because they might uh, murder him. And so uh, we're going to learn the Gemara again. It's the ancient pagans. It's not uh, our Gentiles today who are our neighbors and friends like the Meiri brings. All right, God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. And... Uh,